Hey guys, Ray from LoveyRV.com. So I'm working a little, on a little project today um, involving my uh, solar and batteries. Now I installed the lithium batteries a while back. Um, got three new lithium batteries to replace the lead acid. And I've been reading up on things and really it says you can increase the lifespan of your lithium batteries by not having them come to 100% all the time. Um, they say if you can you not if you can charge them only to say 80 or 90 percent, then you can extend the lifespan. Since I have a rather large bank, um, I think I'll be able to do that without sacrificing too much capacity. Also, we're when we're on full hookups, I really don't need the batteries, so it's it's a shame to have them always coming up to 100 percent all the time. So I want to install a switch so that I can turn my solar on and off and only use it as needed. So if the batteries come up around 85%, I can just throw a switch and turn off the, the charging and let them go down and then flick it back on, say when they get down to maybe 30 or 40% capacity and let them recharge. That way they're, they're working in a, in a, in a, narrow, a more narrow window, which from reading um, should extend the lifespan of my lithium cells. So, I wanted to do it kind of a, on a cheap as possible. Um, there is switches you can do. There are voltage sensitive switches and remote uh, battery switches with even wireless remote battery switches. But I found this, this uh, electromagnetic switch. People use them in cars. This one, so you can disconnect the battery in your car. Say your car has a problem and it's draining the battery. You can hook this thing up and then you just install a manual switch on your dash. So what I'm going to do is install this next to my solar controller, feeding the, the solar panels where they feed into the solar controller. Then I'm going to install this switch next to my trimetric battery monitor that lives in the bathroom. Um, it's kind of mounted out of the way in the bathroom. Also, it's a convenient place because I'm in there multiple times a day so I can check things out, see how the, the current and voltage and, and uh, charge is going. So it would be really simple to go in there and be able to throw this switch and turn off the solar charging. Um, this thing came with a, a little bit of wiring. I happen to have a, a long cable from a previous project so I'll probably be putting about 15 feet of cable in wiring it into the switch. So really what happens is 12 volt gets applied to these terminals and then that shorts these terminals which are carrying the the load um, and they're rated for 100 amps continuous and I, even up to a thousand um, peaks. So this thing's a pretty heavy duty unit. So I don't think it'd be a problem. I only have about max 30 amps coming in there at any given time. So it should be able to handle it. Uh, one drawback will be is when it's activated, it's gonna, it's gonna draw some current just to, to throw the little solenoid in here. I think anywhere from a half amp to an amp, but that's not a biggie because when I'm, when I'm charging, I should have plenty of amperage. We'll see how it goes. But I thought I'd install that and see how that works out. I just got it set up here for a little test. Let's show there's a 12 volt supply. You can hear it click inside when it's on and then delatch. Just like that. Just let me hook up a meter that and I'll show you that it that it actually uh, shorts that out. Pretty cool. So um, maybe I'll pop this apart and we'll take a look inside, see how it works, and then we'll get to installing this thing. So I just thought I'd pop the cover here, give you a look inside, and see the solenoid in there. So we'll just see how it works. Yeah, so that just sucks this disc across the two main terminals and then releases when the 12 volts taken off of it. Pretty simple design. Looks like it's going to be pretty robust. Not a lot to go wrong there. So we'll get her mounted up in beside the solar controller there and give her a test. So here's the mounting arrangement. Basically I replaced this that was sitting there. I was using this switchable breaker as a switch to turn my solar panels on and off. 
But, you know, if I wanted to do it, I had to come out here in the front compartment and switch it back and forth. And this switch isn't really designed to be used continuously like that. It's just for the odd time. So I thought uh, better to have this switch in there. It's a lot larger, but uh, it'll do the job. So here's your uh, my solar coming in. I have the five panels wired in parallel, so they're all coming in here right here through here and then into the the bogart solar controller so that's my main solar positive coming in and then there's the negative wires up there and to activate the the, the switch here the solenoid i've uh, needed 12 volt power so i grabbed it off here 12 volts right there and put a little fuse to protect the wire over to here, then it it heads off inside and into the switch mounted by my trimetric monitor. Comes back out as ground and catches ground down here, which catches it down here at the chassis. So all I have to do is uh, push the switch inside, and this big uh, solenoid will close. Maybe I'll uh, measure what the exact current is on this to keep this all the way closed so I know how much I'm going to be using to do that. So let me get my clamp on meter. So it looks like it takes about uh, half an amp or so to uh, keep that re relay energized, so that's not too bad. Okay, so I modified my mounting to fit a little better carved out a hole for the new switch and soldered on the, the leads so this should fit right into that hole and flush mount quite nicely. Okay all flush mounted in there so let's just do a little test here. Right now we're uh, sitting at 95% charge. So let's go check the solar coming in. Solar, solar. 7.3 amps, so this switch should disconnect the solar for us. There we go, bang. So now we're no longer getting solar charge anymore. Cool. Let's try reconnecting it here. There we go. Okay, so that should help me a lot. Um, like I say, you could have, uh, there's there's much more advanced switches on the market. Uh, there's one from Blue Sea that's a wireless switch that does the same sort of thing. Um, I, and even this company that I got this switch from, they have a wireless solution. It's only a few dollars more, but I kind of like the simplicity of a, of a wired switch. Uh, I don't need to have a key fob or anything. It just uh, works like that. So um, I'll use it uh, this summer and into the, the fall when I start boondocking and report back how it, how it worked out for me. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Thanks for watching. Cheers, folks.